series in the book of Proverbs because we are together today. And I'm going to point us to two, two scriptures, okay, in, in the book of Romans. We're going to look at one verse that is our key verse, and then we're going to pick up some a prayer that God, um, that Paul has prayed for us in the end of Romans, okay? So today we are joining together, and I am grateful, and we should be grateful that God has allowed to bring people from around the world together. Can you say amen to that? Isn't that a beautiful thing, right? And we can participate in what God is doing in the world, and God is doing something, I think, very unique and special here. So if you have your Bible, go ahead and open it up to Romans chapter 1, and you know where I'm going, verse Five. I want to remind us of these verses because these verses God has put in our heart and called us forward with. This is Romans chapter 1, verse 5. Okay, here we go. Through Jesus Christ, we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations including you, verse 6, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. I want us to notice a few things about these verses. Through Jesus Christ, we have first received grace. We are who we are because of the grace of God. God, okay? Grace flows from Christ and flows to us first and foremost. You would not be able to sit here if it was not for the grace of God. You would not have new and eternal life if if it was not for the grace of God. We would not have an eternal hope. We would not have an eternal message. We would not have a new kingdom if it were not for God's grace. I want you to recognize that you are a um, conduit, a place in which God's grace comes to you and then flows from you of grace because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Recognize these things. Thank God for the grace that is in your heart, and you and I have received it because of Christ. That's helpful for us to remember. So through Jesus Christ, we have received grace and apostleship. We have received the gift of the Word of God through the Spirit of God, through those He chosen to give us His Word. We have received God's Word, godly leadership, because of the grace that is in Jesus Christ. So everything we have eternally, everything that we are personally, is because of God and His grace and His creation, and He's given us also His Word. So He's given us His grace, and then He's given us His Word to do what? Okay, And this is our purpose, to bring about the obedience of faith. This is what we do. We are bringing about in this place as a greenhouse faith that grows and faith that shows, okay? God's grace and God's word hits our heart, and then we are to plant it in the soil of our soul, and then we are to follow it. We say amen to that, right? It's more than just hearing the word. It's more than just receiving the grace, but allowing it to mix together so that we follow after Christ, okay? We're Christians not because of knowing Bible verses. We're Christians because God's grace has met our soul, transformed us, and therefore we show it and grow in it, okay? Get that in your heart, By grace, we've been saved through faith. It's not of our own, something that we've worked for. It's a gift of God. So we here at Crosspoint are focusing in on bringing about the obedience of faith. Why do we do it? For the sake of His name. At the name of 
Jesus. It's not about a name of a church. It's not about a name of a minister. It's not about a name of a worship team or anything that is seen publicly. It's about the name of Jesus, right? We want him to be remembered. We want to become less so he becomes greater, so we serve in Jesus' name. We pray for Jesus in Jesus' name. We give because of his work and his grace and his word and that we joyfully follow him in obedience. That's why we do what we do. And where do we do it? Among all the nations. Aren't you grateful that God is bigger than Rockford? Is Rockford important? Absolutely. Is your neighbor important? Absolutely. Is this region important? Yes, because God has called us here. But God's mission and his focus is bigger than that. It extends even to North Dakota, right? It extends beyond our borders. It extends to all nations, including Myanmar. It extends to every place. This has been in God's focus and this has been in God's heart since the beginning. And we have opportunity to receive his grace, to understand his word, but then to communicate these things to the ends of the world. And so we intentionally are focused in on what he's doing here, yes, and we are responsible for this. We are focused in on who we are doing, what we do for, and we're extending ourselves beyond our normal comfort zones because God is calling us there. I want you to think about these things and being uh, um, uh, excited about these things. Verse 6, including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. Are you called to belong to Jesus Christ? You're called to belong, first and foremost, to Christ. And the word belong is important. It's intentional. He bought us with a price, right? We are not our own. And so if you belong to another... We then, and therefore, out of love and out of grace and out of God's goodness, give ourselves over to say, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And we look to him, say, God, what would you have for this day? We look for him to say, God, what are you saying in my circumstance? We look for him uh, when we have uh, opportunity to make decisions as to go this place or do this thing or what have you. We belong to Christ. And this call to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among other nations extends to us. And we are, ought to be about our Father's business. Thank you. Give yourself to this. We are giving ourselves to this. So Paul starts this amazing letter out this way. He does an introduction and talks about what he's about and instructs us. And if you have read the book of Romans, I would recommend you to continue to read it, continue to read it. Paul lays out systematically theological truth built upon theological truth built upon theological truth. And we get a glimpse of God's work and God's understanding and what he is doing and what he will do in the world. Now, near the end of the book, this is chapter 15. He prays for the church in Rome. And he also, by extension, prays for us. And in this passage, we'll see three things that are in his heart and on God's heart for us. So I want you and I to focus in on this. Number one, live in harmony. Live in harmony. Harmony. This is Romans chapter 15 with verse 5. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you 
to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus. Let's pause there. God has many titles, right? Counselor, Redeemer, Friend, Creator, Provider. One of his titles, and I like this, is the God of Endurance. The God of Encouragement. It requires, our harmony requires endurance, and it requires encouragement. We are called to a long obedience in the same direction. Christianity matters how you start. When we become a believer, it's the starting line, not the finish line. Hello, right? We say yes to Christ. He transforms us so that we can bring glory to him, becoming his hands and feet in the world. And to live a life of faith requires endurance. Have any of you been through anything difficult? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. All of us. Right? All the time. Things that require energy, things that require effort, things that are painful. Have you ever been annoyed by anyone in your life? Irritated? Perhaps angry? In order to live in harmony, <laughs> requires grace, hello, requires his word, yeah, and it requires that we endure, bear one another, long suffering. And guess what? You don't have it in you to do it. But God does. The God of endurance does. And not only is the God of endurance, he's the God of encouragement. Anyone here ever need to be encouraged? All of us. Encouragement to keep going. Encouragement to continue in doing good. Encouragement to say, hey, nice job here. You're heading in the right direction. You're doing the right thing. Thank you for this. All of these things, these two elements, are centered in the character of God. May the God of endurance and the God of encouragement. May this God grant you to live in harmony. Any of you sing, right? Like choirs? Like it, right? It's one thing to have a magnificent voice singing melody. But when one voice is joined with another and singing some notes that are just a tad lower, just a tad higher, and then you get nuances and you get complexities and you add another and another, you have this a gathering of voices that in their harmony, the, um, there is a greaterness, there is an um, extension of what is being proclaimed or sung. It's beauteous. Beauteous, that's not a word, okay? It is now. It's beauteous, okay? <laughs> Thank Oh, it is a word? Thank you. The English teachers among us say, I got an A, not a <laughs> sad face, okay? Beauteous, wondrous, <laughs> powerful. Singing in harmony. Better yet, living in harmony. So what does that mean? That means everyone comes with a different voice. That means when we join together, each of us are gifted differently, and we have something to do. And when we put it together, it's a beautiful song. Some of us sing. Some of us do tech. Some of us pray. Some of us give financially. Some of us participate in other ways. And all of these things, we are singing the same song. Same melody. Different 
and complementary. No. You and I and we together are the body of Christ, which extends as far as Myanmar, which extends to parts of the earth. And God calls us to sing, as it were, to work, as it were, to live in such harmony in accord with Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the main melody maker, right? He is the star of the show, and we come alongside of him and what he's doing. Don't you love that, right? God, will you and can we exalt Christ? And as he is singing, so to speak, we come alongside him and join him in harmony as to what he is doing. And this is the prayer of the Apostle Paul, and this is the prayer of the Holy Spirit, that we, in bringing about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations, that we would gain encouragement and endurance so that we can live in harmony. He continues on. Secondly, glorify God with one voice. That together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That together with all of our differences, with all of our talents, that we would join them together. Together with one voice, a song that is lived in our life that focuses in on God, that we would glorify God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this prayer echoes a prayer that you should be familiar with in John chapter 17, as Jesus himself prayed for us this way in verse 20. I do not ask for these only, talking about his, in his immediate context, his disciples and those who were listening to them then. He says, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That's us, by the way. You are in this passage. You are in this prayer. And this is how Jesus prays for you that they may all be one. Just as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent Unity for unity's sake is a dead-end street. The ultimate goal is not that we are unified. <laughs> Unity is a means to an end so that when people, in particular those on the outside, observe what is happening on the inside, they'll say, only God can do this. So that they would believe that Jesus is indeed sent from God and is the very Son of God. Unity is a means to an end, not an end of itself. Are you hearing me? Okay. We're unified as we have a goal to accomplish. Okay, I played football. I played basketball. And our teams came together because we had one goal, and that was to beat the snot of the other team. And so as we had one goal, we trained hard. We memorized plays. We understood the nuances of our offense and what were happening on defense. And so we worked together and we were formed in the trenches, so to speak. A brotherhood of people that had a single goal. The same is true in our unity. The single goal is not to beat the other team, but to see Jesus glorified and then be redeemed. And so if we are focusing in on being a witness of God to the world, then our unity takes place by default. Are you understanding this concept? Okay. 
And so my prayer is that we would be more diversified and so that the miracle of unity and Jesus would be more glorified. Okay? Aren't you grateful that in this congregation we have people who are over 90 years old? <laughs> the 90-year-olds say, yes, amen, right? <laughs> Aren't you grateful that we have people in this congregation that are under 90 days old, right? Aren't you grateful that we have people of different skin tones? Aren't you grateful that we have people who live on the north and then the south? And then the east and then the west coming together. Grateful that we have different economic backgrounds, different educational backgrounds, from those who have PhDs to those who are learning their ABCs, right? We have lots of things here, lots of interests here, different languages here. And I want people from the outside as they look in to say, why are those people together? Why do they come together? Why do they love each other this way? Because in normal human flesh, we shouldn't be together, right? We shouldn't be in this place. We shouldn't be doing this. But for the grace of God, here we are. So I pray for... More older people, more younger, younger people, more people in the middle. Different colors, different nationalities, different languages. That our um, uh, diversity would be amazingly huge so that our unity will be amazingly glorious to God. Right? You understand this? We don't have diversity for diversity's sake. We don't have unity for unity's sake, but we want these things so that the world may believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That surely God is among you. Paul reminds us of these things when he was in a city called Ephesus, which was uh, a ways away from the epicenter of Christianity, which was Jerusalem. And he told them, and he tells us as well, that there is one body and one spirit. When you go to Africa, it's one body, and it's the same Holy Spirit that's in us is our people there. Just as you were called to one hope, we share this, that belongs to your call. There is one Lord. There is just one faith. There is one baptism, even though we've been baptized in various places, in various means. It's, we're being baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's one God and Father of all, who is over all, and through all, and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. One faith, one Lord, one baptism, one hope, one spirit throughout the world. So as we sing songs in English, there are people singing songs in Hindu, in Mandarin, in Malaysian, in Spanish, all over the world. And we are one body. What? unites us is greater than anything that divides us. Aren't you grateful for that? And his final prayer for us is this. Welcome one another. Don't you like that term, welcome you are welcome here. Simple, but profound. Therefore, verse 7, welcome one another as 
Christ has welcomed you. Why? For the glory of God. Do you see it there again? Right? That's the aim. Right? So what are we to do? Welcome one another. Better yet, welcome the other. Right? Who is the other to you? Someone who's different than you. Right? Someone who perhaps speaks a different language than you. Someone who drives all the time versus walks. Someone who has a different skin tone than you. Do we have a problem with that in our country, by the way? Rockford, we're good, though. Right? We, we, we have no issues. Welcome the tattooed other. Welcome the non-tattooed other. Welcome the bald in. Welcome the hairy. <laughs> One of the greatest gifts that you can give is the gift of hospitality. A hug to someone open door, an open hand, an open heart. Things that happen here is amazing. Sometimes I wish you could see what I can see up here as I look around. It's amazing. Why? Because God is amazing. So let us join together it takes every one of us. Right? Smiles, embraces, invitations to home, learning different languages. Right? Come on, people. Right? Understanding, listening to stories. And we get to enjoy the unity, and God gets the glory. Right? Understand what he's doing. So every time that you put a smile on your face, every time you make a phone call, every time that you decide to come together, every time you turn to God in prayer, every time that you write a check, every time that you say, God, I am yours, I belong to you, thank you for your grace, God, help me to extend this grace beyond, in particular, to the other, it glorifies God. That's the ultimate goal of unity. Not to pat ourselves on the back, but to say, well, look what God has done. Right? Don't you want to be a part of that? This city needs more of it. And we could say amen to that. Right? And so it requires all of us to extend ourselves. Because Christ extended himself. That's why we do it. Welcome one another for the glory of God. So we have never done this before, but we are going to say our faith together that has been written in the form of the Apostles' Creed. Are you familiar with this? Okay. Helpful, focused information. And so as a, um, a statement of our unity, understanding God's goodness in what has been passed down to us, these are things we believe. So we're going to read this together. Are you guys ready for this? Me, me, me. Okay, someone's very excited about this. Okay. We're going to say this together. Are you ready? Here we go. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Who come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. So what holds us together is greater than what separates us. So as we look to what God is calling us to do, because of the grace of God, because of the Word of God, God being the God of encouragement and endurance, we are bringing about the obedience of faith for the sake of His name among all the nations. We do so by living in harmony with one another. We do so by glorifying God with one voice. We do so by welcoming one another. And today we have opportunity to welcome one another. As we go to the picnic and as we continue to celebrate, we have the freedom and the voice to do so. We have opportunity to welcome each other in this place and then welcome and embrace the greater community as we pray and we intentionally go and then we can welcome those as we send people out to the corner of the earth. This is exciting to me, right? And our unity brings God's glory, so let us sing in harmony with one voice, because we have one faith, one God, one spirit, one baptism, one hope, which joins us together. So at this time, we're going to invite up Pastor Key. Pastor Keith, if you can come up, and he is going to lead us in communion. By the way, if you do not know this brother, you, get, you need to get to know him, okay? I have not met, come on up here, man. I have not met, uh, I, I've rarely met someone as humble, someone as genuine, someone who is devoted as Pastor Key to the folks that he, he pastors and serves with. He literally will drive the night to go pick someone fr- up from the airport connect them to different families, connect them to uh, a community of faith. He and the congregation that meets at 1 o'clock is a gift. It's a gift, right? We to them, they to us. And so embracing one another, and I'm, I am very, very grateful to partner with this man. Um, incredible what God is doing. And so we have opportunity to do this today. And at another point, he will preach to us, Pastor Key, which would be great, but he's going to lead us in communion. So thank you for that. Good morning. Welcome to all in the name of Jesus. Uh, You look so, so beautiful because of the grace of God is upon to you. So, uh, God is good all the time. So, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your worship service and the table of communion. Lord, have mercy on us. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lord, let there be peace in this place. We need your presence and send us your healing power. Please teach us, show us your way. Guide us, lead us, protect us. Please live with us, join us, you above all. Lord, you are our savior. You are lords of lords, king of kings. Lord, we are people, your people. We prepare our open heart. Lord, we will seek your face. We give you thanks and praise for this faith because of you are worthy. We commit our time and our worship service in your hand. I humble pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
this morning before I communion, I would like to say that uh, God wants three things. God wants to you, God wants to me, God wants to us. First of all, the first thing is God wants to meet with us. I was uh, afraid, I was wor worried. I would not meet God every single day because of he owned my life. He holds my future. I am afraid, I am worried to forget God. God is interested in us. So please meet to God every day. He waiting to you. Tell about your life. He is a maker. Second, God wants bless us. The Hebrew uh, name, God's name is Jehovah Jireh, which means He is a provider. God is a provider. Whatever you need, He will provide to us. He knows everything. He can do all things. God will open the door for you and for me. And he prepared the ways. Please come to God. Please. The third thing, the last thing is God wants fellowship with us. It means walk with God. He is big and we are small, as big as God is, we can experience him. He wants us to know him in the simple things of our life, as well as the great. Don't forget. Don't forget. Walk with God every single day. He wants to teach him the nature of God. So I, this morning, I encourage three things. God wants to meet you. God wants to bless us. God wants to fellowship with you. So I hope uh, you are already go to communion. Do you have the, the bread and the cup? So let's read scripture and but take together. The first Corinthians, the book of First Corinthians, chapter eleven, verses twenty-three to twenty-five. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you, the Lord Jesus. On the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. we we'll take together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For well, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let take together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your loving us and always seeing us. I am so grateful 
Father, thank you for your amazing power and work in our life. Father, you call us the able of your eyes, the crown of creation, friend and beloved. I will echo this on the credit. I will praise the Lord. You are worthy of all praise, blessing, honors, and glory. We humble pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. God bless you all.